augmented intelligence trading tools. Serenity, Harmony, Soul in 500 microseconds or less. Okay, augmented intelligence trading tools, what are they? They're tools that are designed to take away the mundane aspects of trading. Example, moving your stops, taking a profit at certain points, and alternating um, or alerting you to a problem. Excuse me. Um, expert advisors are the main backbone of the augmented trading tools. Those are, um, they're not black boxes. They're called cat tools, fat tools, computer assisted trading tools, or fat tools, forex assisted trading tools. They're indicator scripts, and they have an LMS with them, a learning management system. Now, before we start, you have to go through some vocabulary. It's not very hard. It's, it's not very bad, but you'll have to watch five or six little videos to start. First thing is copyrights um, failed. This is how we prepare our system to run. So we're going to bring this up. We're going to close off a bunch of things, a bunch of items, and we're going to maximize this. We're going to close this off, and what we do is we come in here, let's just remove everything that's on here. Delete, delete, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna look, see this bar right here. To know if I have data, I go to History Center and some of these pairs I may not have any data on. Well, if I don't have any data on the pair, I go to Tool and I, oh, well, let's do it from here. Insert Indicators, Custom Indicators, and there's one called Data Prep. What this does, it's got some inputs to it. One is training mode and just the font color. It goes out and tries to download the data. Well, I'd done this once before, and it's just saying, hey, we were able to go through and download all this data and prepare us for trading. Now, I'm going to go to indicator, and I'm going to go to remove this. All right. If you don't do that, you'll get this alert that says copyrights failed, or it'll show up in your expert tab at the bottom. The expert tab is right down here. If we hit control T, control T. Well, okay, if too much is going on, we go to terminal and it's down here and it tells you what's going on. It will tell you if it had a problem or it'll jump up and beep at you. It'll say alert that you didn't have enough data. Now, this is some of my shorthand. H0 means um, the current bar is high. H1 means the previous bar and H2 means um, two bars back. Now, um, let's bring this up right here and let's go into here. If we look at this, this is um, H0 would be the high of this bar, okay, right there. The, the bar next to it would be H1. The bar next to that would be H2's high. Now, this one's still forming. It's still moving. See it change? Well, because that one's changing, um, it's called the active bar or zero bar. It makes indicators change. So if I look at this one right here and I go into... Um, oscillator it doesn't matter what it is this bar will change on it now some indicators don't do that and some do some don't and some do okay now what it'll do is it's, it'll change just like that all right now why is that important because a, a forming bar has to do with something else that comes up here a forming bar moves around like this it goes up and down well <laughs> Look, um, the bar um, or condition has not been met to stop the indicator or set it. That means it's got to have a new bar and then it can't change anymore. These are called forming bars or forming pivots, but they deal with a problem called relabeling. Relabeling means like you go above resistance. This would be R1 would be resistance. And all of a sudden it pops right back down. It might change the way your indicator looked or your support or resistance. Example, this is a doji. The candle took this path down and then ran up. This would be called an engulfing bull. Well, the candles change all the time when they're in real time. The same thing happens with indicators. Indicators move up and down based on one bar. That's called relabeling. If you go one bar back, then they're not like that. So relabels happen to indicators, pivots, candlesticks um, on one bar. If you do not want this to happen um, to your trade, go on close a bar. The downside is that you'll miss the big moves up. Okay. Now, here's some vocabulary. R0 is forming resistance. S0 is forming support. R1's current resistance. S1's current support. Now, this is called normal data sampling. You go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this revolves around um, statistics. Statistics basically worked like this for many, many, many years. Um, they would do a small data sample, like 20 bars, and make an inference off of it. Well, 
Statistics don't have to work like that anymore. We can do what's called a full data sample. And with that, we can do something unique called time slicing of data. So let's go just prior to this big move. Okay, see that right there? We're going to come in here, we're going to go to object list, and we're going to edit it, and we're going to get this timestamp. We're going to come over to common, and we're going to say now. Okay? Now, we're going to grab another timestamp, and we're going to drop this on here. We're going to go to object list. We're going to go to edit, and we're going to go to 24 hours. And then, um, this is 24 hours ago. All right, now we're going to go to parameter. We're going to type this in, and we want to go to three. Okay, now we're going to go to close. Now we're going to jump back in time until we find that. All right, now if we don't want to keep looking back, we could do this. We could put this in at three. This is approximate. There it is. Well, we're going to grab something called a, a shape. Now, this is the predicted range that it thinks it'll move. Okay, now I could have looked backwards in time. Now, notice this. I could have looked backwards in time, but I chose not to. Okay, I could have looked backwards in time. Or I could look forwards in time. And I could say find that range because that predicts what's going to happen better. So now let's do the same thing. I'm going to do this again. We're going to go to object list. And we're going to go up here. We're going to get edit. We're going to go control C. That's 24 hours ago. Now we're going to do it again. But we're going to go back 24 hours and or 48 hours. So now we're going to edit this and we're going to go back to 48 hours ago, 48 hours ago. OK, now we're going to go into here and we're going to put this in and we're going to change this from three to one. All right. Now, let's see if that is that in there yet. I'm not sure it was the first. I don't even know what day of the week it is. If I don't want to keep going back, I could go back to here and I could change this to a one. Okay, now let's look at the range. If we took this, the range was much, much bigger. And about this time of night, we expect movements that are bigger. If I would have said, well, let's look at this range or this range, the one would be bigger. Now, how do we use that? Well, we can take and we can grab an indicator. And we can come in here and we'll call it custom and we're going to call it a Bollinger Band. Now I don't want to make the Bollinger Band yellow. We're going to make it black. Okay. And um, we're going to pop this on the screen. Now this Bollinger Band was based off volatility of the range. This was a normal range. It moved more than a normal range right now, but not by much. Not by much. Okay. It's a very simple technique that you could use this on. Here's your entry right there. That's your entry as it starts to hook up. So let's grab a different tool and just use this simple technique. Okay. We're going to go to insert and we're going to come right up in here to indicators, custom indicators, and we're going to go to bull bear trigger. Okay. Now, what this does is says if it slows down, slows down, and goes above the high next to you, it's a buy. But your stop, your stop would be this big because this is normal volatility. And this would be a, a double normal volatility stop. I want to move this. Come on, computer. Let me get a hold of it. I want to take that red box. Not There it goes. Computer. Okay, fine. Don't let me move it. Um, we'll, we'll measure it and we'll delete it. Okay. Let's just get, let's say we got in right there. We put our stop down. It's 20 pips. Well, if we came down in here and we could grab this, this would be 20 pips down. So I'm going to draw this box in and we're going to go to 20 pips. Now I stopped this on the current one, but it is possible to go out and get the next one. So that's 18 pips. This is close enough. We come down 18, 19, 20. That's about 20 pips. That's your stop. Came into our stop area a little bit, but now we're into profit. Okay. That's a simple way to use one of those tools. All right. Now let's remove all this. Okay, so we have some unique ways of slicing and dicing the data. All right, so let's come back in here and let's get back into our PowerPoint. All right. Oops, we didn't want that one. That's not the right PowerPoint. Let's go over here to the one we wanted. Okay, so this is called um, time slice data. Pattern slice data means we go back in time and we find a pattern. Well, that's easy enough. You look for the pattern. Tell the computer to do that. Event slice data could be just time of day. We go back to a time of day. And what we do is we're 
we're working on a concept called predictive volatility. We go back 24 hours in time. In this example, we, we go back 24 hours, we go back for 20 days, and we end up with 20 data points. We're going to do this looking forward after we do it, we record resistance and support. Well, here's an example. 80 minus 20, or 20, 100 minus 20 is 80, 75 minus 50 is 25, and 55 minus 45 is 5. We average that out and get the movement. Well, because things grow, we need to divide them by themselves and get a percentage. So resistance minus support divided in gets us a percentage. And this we take a standard deviation of that, and voila, we had the Bollinger Band we looked at, okay, with a high probability of being in this range. Okay, so an example of that would be what I just showed you. It's called event sliced Bollinger Band or a time sliced Bollinger Band. Okay, now here's some other terms you need to know. Fade means that we ran up in an uptrend. Well, how do we tell we're in an uptrend? Well, we could grab this and let's take off our indicator that's on here and we could say, well, let's go to insert indicators and let's go to custom and let's go down here to red and blue trend. This means we're trending down. Well, if we're trending down, we better not be in an uptrend. It shows us that we are just by color in the bar. Okay, now that's important. All right. So a fade, this little circle means that we're in a fade and we're going to short in an uptrend. A pullback, we're going to represent it by a box, means that we're going with the trend. It pulled back and we're going with it. A breakout is we're definitely going with the trend, but it's represented by this dash. Okay. Now, we need to cover experts, which are the core of things, but we have a few more lectures that you have to go through. These are called expert advisors, all right? And we will catch that on the next lecture. Thanks.